I'm Sydney Simone, and I am joined here with Autumn Santos. I actually went to high school with her um, for a little bit in Gurney, Illinois, and I actually moved away. (laughs) But uh, she continued uh, her track journey um, all throughout uh, high school and college, and then now she's in school. Um, So we're having her back on the show. I had her on the first time when I did Station Head. But Autumn, thank you so much for coming on. You are absolutely welcome. It is a pleasure and it's nostalgia here. There's a lot going on. <laughs> I know I've been following you and you've been in school and it, it looks like so forever. It seems so <laughs> intense. I'm like, you're always studying. Like, talk it, about it, that. How is that going? Yeah, it is intense. So yeah, so Sydney, she interviewed me when I was at Minnesota. So Minnesota State University, I think I was a senior at the time. I, I'm not quite sure. It was a couple of years back anyway, but now I'm here in the Dallas area. So I'm at TWU. I'm getting my doctorate in occupational therapy. I'm in my clinical rotation now, and it is 40 hours a week. It's kicking my butt, but I'm almost (laughs) done. And then I'm going to be a third year student. I'll graduate next May in 2020. Yeah. So it's three years long. Yes. So it's Texas Women's University, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And I honestly never heard of the school, but it's ranked so high in the nation. It's ranked 17th. So I'm like, surely I won't get in. But I got in, grace of God. So I'm here now. <laughs> Moved so, all the way from Illinois. <laughs> so what made you go back to school and go this route? And uh, you said occupational therapy, right? Therapy, yes. Okay. So basically, I think the last time I was talking to you, my major was already switched. I knew I wanted to go and get a master's, not even a doctorate, to be honest. But I knew I was like, well, the wellness route at that time, I was doing like an internship. My major was public health. So I'm like, Surely this is in the cards for me, but as Sydney, you know, when she interviewed me, I had all these hip surgeries. So I was able to take a fifth Mm -hmm. year, which kind of granted me that extra year of like clarity on my life. Like, what am I really doing after graduation? And I literally was not seeing that wellness path or public health at all. So I was like, well, shoot, what can I do with this major? And a couple of friends were like, well, I'm going to occupational therapy school after this. I'm like, well, what is that? <laughs> but I knew I wanted to help people. My major previously when I was a freshman and sophomore was exercise science. I was going to go into physical therapy because I had all the things with my hips. So I had to get physical therapy, but I'm like, what is occupational therapy? So right. basically what we do is like, we look at everything, activities, the daily living that's meaningful to you. If you had a stroke we're able to try to regain those skills again. So you're able to get onto the community and do what you need to do. So we collaborate really close with PT and really close with speech. And you can get a master's, you can get a doctorate, but I just so happen to get into a doctoral program. So I'm here wow. now. <laughs> sounds very, <laughs> sounds like a lot, number one, like kudos <laughs> to you. Cause all that, yeah. like the biology, the anatomy, I was never that type of girl in school. I was a physics, the chemistry. That was, that was my thing. Yeah. Uh, So kudos to you on that. So how has it been, uh, you know, how has the transition been been as an athlete? You know, you come from this athletic background, you know how much it means to be able to use your joints and your muscles and all these things and your mobility. Talk about the relationship between the two and how they kind of coincide a little bit. Right. So how my track career ended was honestly truly devastating. I mean, I'm fine now, whatever. But the time that you interviewed me for, you know, I was prepping, I had these surgeries, I was ready to go. And then COVID hit, you know, it impacted the whole entire nation. And it was my fifth year and I was in the primest shape ever. I mean, I lost weight. I did everything you could do to be in the best shape of your life for the last season that you'll ever run. And I'll remember it right. Like I've, my one goal was to qualify for internationals. I ran D2 college and track and I qualified for the four by four. And we were ranked, I think like fourth in the nation at that moment. And it was in Alabama at the time. So we flew in, it was literally in March. So like three years ago and we were like ready to go. And then all of a sudden we got the news of like COVID, you guys got to fly back immediately. We're like, what the heck we're supposed to be running the next day? Like no Mm -hmm. way. And then they're talking about potential graduation being canceled. I'm like, 
my track career can't end this way. I did not take a fifth year. <laughs> you know, I needed the classes right. and whatever, but I'm like, I did not take a fifth year to end like that. So everything got like taken away and my hips were fine at that moment. Like I was in the prime of shape I've ever been in my life. So it really hit me when I got back to Minnesota. I'm like, wow, my track career is really done. Like it was really kind of ripped away from me without me calling it, you know, whether it be an injury thing that had to have me stop, at least I was like prepared, but this one, you can't ever get that back. So sometimes I'll have dreams about like what could have been at nationals and stuff, but it was, it was a sad situation. And my heart goes out to all the athletes and everyone that went through that same situation. So yeah. Yeah. I had a, I had a friend who was, uh, well, I know a couple guys who were going for football at the time and the, you know, the combine was coming up and it just, it went to an end and some people tried again and some people were just like, you know, this is just, this is where it ends for me. I know. And I thought the same thing. I'm like, I already, I got to move forward. I knew I wanted to go to grad school eventually. So I'm like, I'm not going to do another six year. My coach was like, come on autumn. But I'm like, I'm 23. Your body starts to break down. Track is so much on the body. And you know, I never had these dreams of going pro or anything like that. I mean, some people on my team did have the dreams, but it just, it just wasn't for me. So I had to sit with that reality of like, this is done, you know, mm -hmm. that, that part of autumn, who's always been an athlete kind of was grieving that. And I don't think it's addressed that often the mental health and, you know, the athletes that stop a career, I mean, being an athlete all their life. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. you know, going from like the next, yeah. Step, yeah, I don't think it's ever really addressed. You're like, just supposed to be okay. And on to the next and I'm so, like so how that? did you cope with that did you you know what did you do to you know get over it? for one to deal with it like this is where it is it ended abruptly number one and then two like you know let that go so that you could focus on school so how did you deal with your mental health and that and, and that's such a good question so I I'm such a happy person like literally 24 you years are years. very bubbly and that was a moment that I was like at a very, very low point in my life. Like it, it definitely took about like maybe a good month to try to pick it up. And my sister was sad for me. My parents were sad. So it was just a really hard time. So I, I was able to like feel those feelings and reminisce and, but then also look back and be like, wow, track has blessed me with this full scholarship track has blessed me with forever friends and teammates and you know, I was able to accomplish a lot of dreams that I had, regardless of, you know, not placing at nationals. I still went to nationals. I did things that I've set out to do and I did them. So it, it took a couple months, but honestly, I was so glad to be at home with my family during that time. I was blessed because I was able to go back to Illinois. Like some people were stuck where they were stuck at. And I was able to like be with my family and you know, reminisce about the good times and stuff. And I, I still work out to this day. Like that athlete is always in me. Like that won't ever, I think once an athlete, always an athlete. That won't I agree. Ever, I agree. Yeah. Like granted my body's been through some things with all my surgeries, but I'm pretty, I know my body I'm very in tune and I still do what I can do in the gym. And everyone's like, were you a gymnast or were you a track athlete? I was like, okay, now I know I still got it. Cause everyone in the gym still <laughs> right. asks, like, okay, I'm good. <laughs> but yeah, it, I mean, it, it, it's a lot, it's a lot to process and everyone goes through their own mental, you know, how they cope with things that a family and my friends, my mom, my dad, I thank gosh for them. Seriously. They got me out of a very dark place. Cause it was, it was sad. It was lonely. And I'm like, like, Track was all I knew. <laughs> like it was crazy. And all my friends were there. So it was sad. And I did and it was no goodbye. I never got to say bye to my team. Right. Like, yeah. You know, I never and I never even got a graduation. So it was so like, okay, on to the next. How was that? Oh my gosh. Like I you mean, worked so hard in college yeah. for that moment. Like, yeah. It's like five years I was spent, you know, in Minnesota. And I'm like, on uh, high school, Sydney, I didn't even get a graduation either. I was off running state track. <laughs> So I didn't do that. And I, so I didn't walk the stage in high school. I did not walk the stage in undergrad. So this doctorate is meaningful to me. I will be walking the stage. <laughs> yes. oh, no one's going to tell me different. I have not been able to walk the stage since middle school. <laughs> wow. That so, is crazy. This one means a lot. Cause I did not get those opportunities and they're like, Oh, you can come back next year. But it's like, it's not the same. It's not the same. And it's not the same people. I don't even know these people anymore. So, <laughs> right. I, I, right. I wanted to say hi to my friends. So, yeah. I know we talked about graduation, coming out of school, and just pivoting. 
going through school and one a new city because you you haven't been to Dallas before prior to no no what's that what's that been like just transitioning um first of all I love Texas before I moved to Houston I spent (laughs) a lot of time a lot of time in in Dallas so I love I love job though that's still big thank you and I really want to get back to Texas I love Austin Dallas Texas uh Dallas and Houston but yeah so the transition how has that been uh mm-hmm. just being in a new city it's like refresh is it refreshing is it a little scary do you have family there yeah so when I got so I applied to programs all over the nation because I nothing's tying me down in life and I'm young and I'm like might as well go wherever I can get in at so I applied to schools like Nevada Ohio I mean Texas clearly um, and then I'm when I got into Texas, I was like, well, public costs. So that's amazing. Right. I can get in state tuition. And I'm like, it's a new place I've never been to before. So I'm located in more of like the Denton area. Okay. So it's like about 45 minutes to an hour away from Dallas. Um, and I've now been in Texas for almost two years now. I'm actually moving out of Texas, though, um, in, in three weeks because my clinical is done. I'm in Mesquite now for my clinical. But um, then we go back, we transition to like more of an academic portion again, and it's all online. So for me to save money, it's easier to go back to Illinois for only a couple months. It's temporary. And then I will be going out to San Diego for my next rotation. And that's like three to four months. So um, transition honestly has been great. I live with uh, a girl who owns the home and she's also in the program and that's been great. And another roommate that's also in the program. So it's already like I had instant friends, which is really nice. Cause I know when people move to new places, it can be kind of challenging mm-hmm. because they don't know anyone. Thankfully they have like Bumble friends and all that, but I'm really bubbly and I love making friends. So that part wasn't that hard for me. And I don't, I didn't know anyone coming here, but thankfully I've gained a good amount of friends that now if I come back, it's still home. It's like Minnesota. It's like, that'll always be a part of me. It's like, this will always be a part of me. I'll come back for graduation. But in the meantime, things are transitioning. So we got to keep elevating. (laughs) So where do you want to end up? I guess once you graduate, what's that dream city? Do you have one yet? And everyone, I do. Everyone has asked me Even my clinical people. They're like, you've been all over. Where do you want to be? (laughs) Honestly. So my sister's in LA right now and my site is in San Diego, like in September. So I truly want to see how it is living in California because I know what they say. It's expensive, but like you're paying for the view and all that. And I'm 26. I really do want to enjoy my career for the very first time and be where I want to be for the first time. And California has my heart. The West Coast has my heart. Mm-hmm. So I see, I, I generally see myself there. Like, I think Texas had a, it, it, a great run. Like, this will yeah. always be home, uh, maybe for a family one day. But in the meantime, in my 20s, I think I yeah. want to go out and have a really good time and not regret things or being tied down to anything so now now you mentioned your sister and for those of you who don't know she has a younger sister who also um ran track as well so talk about one how that was running alongside your sister as well and then two um was there ever a time where you guys like were comparing co- careers or anything or comparing uh paths you know talk about that right. experience um, so my sister is 24, going to be 25. We're about a year and a half apart. I am older than her, even though I look younger, but <laughs> um, yeah, so she's been in, out in California now for, I want to say like three years. She got her master's. She got her MBA. She works for the LA Clippers now. Um, so she, she really okay, Brynn, okay. <laughs> she's been working there for almost a yeah. year now, and I'm really proud of her. But as far as track goes, so my sister was a walk-on. So she was a walk-on in a D1 school. I ran D2. However, when she got her master's, they were a D2 school and she still had a year of eligibility. So it was crazy because the COVID year, like I made it to nationals, but like we always thought like for outdoor, like she would Mm -hmm. be on a relay or something and we would mash up and we would always talk about like going head to head between one another. And I'm not going to get emotional right now, but it was when COVID hit, like my sister made this like really like meaningful and just gut-wrenching sad post about like how it was always supposed to be us like lane by lane like Mm -hmm. running the race together and finishing how we should have finished and she still had another year left of track to go because she like got her master's and stuff but for me I was done so we always 
played out the scenario like I'm lane three, I'm getting the curve, and I'm. <laughs> So right. I my sister, my if you sister. ran track then you know how much it means to like you know pick your lane and everything right. like that. I'm on the yeah, inside so, so I right. can see her so we would always we would play it out like that and unfortunately I mean it, it COVID happened right like we know that I've healed from it all but we just still goof around like I'm still on the inside lane <laughs> but um and as far as careers go like I'm super happy she went more of the business route I'm more of the healthcare route um, and I'm jealous because she's actually making real money and I'm still a college student. So <laughs> you're going to catch up. No, yeah, I'll there. catch up, <laughs> but it's, I'm really proud of her and she's living out her dreams. Cause my dad literally, cause she moved out during that COVID time to California. Like we got her car shipped and everything. And my dad was like, just do your master's in Ohio where you went to undergrad. And my sister's like, dad, I need to like follow my gut and go with it. And ever since she's been in California, so go with your gut. Right. <laughs> like, and it's, it's good that you both still stayed in like the, the sports, um, field, different spectrums, but you know, per se, um, yeah. same with me a little bit. Uh, I just took the journalism route with that, but, um, so did you ever feel like you two were competing against each other? Meaning like, you had to be better than each other, one another. Like I had to be better than her. Or um, did you feel insecure at times? Like, oh, my sister is doing better than me. Or did you ever have that thing? Because I know some, uh, a lot of people some who siblings, have siblings yeah. that, you know, it's like that competition or even parents that did it, you know? True. And thankfully my parents never pinned us up against one another more. So I would always start a sport and then Bryn would always follow after me, would always do the sport right after me. And I would kind of get like annoyed with that. But as I got older, I'm like, oh, she just like inspires me me one day. So <laughs> when we were running track. I was, I mean, track times don't lie. You literally can't make up a time. I was always faster than my sister. So there was no like, ooh, close race. It was like, always I was the sprinter and like I was the one who got the track scholarship my sister did walk on the team she was more like the brains like everything comes easy to my sister okay. where me I work hard at it it'll come but I have to work hard at it but like as far as track like she would always try to like inspire to almost you know be as fast as I was like do the stuff that I was doing so it was never like any animosity towards okay. one another it was more so like we got this sis and we were in different divisions too at the time so right. it was really whatever it was almost like when we were both in the, in the D2 level, we're like, make it to, I was like, make it to nationals brand. Like let's run together <laughs> like, fun, get it together. But I mean, like I said, stuff happened, but right. you know, it was always fun and games with us, but boys, I feel like boys are like, I'm going to beat you. At the right. Other. They're way more competitive. Like they take it way too serious. Real serious. Yeah, and yeah. my sister and I are like, no, it's not that serious. <laughs> so let me ask you what, um, advice would you give to someone, um, who had to go through the pandemic and the, or even not even the pandemic. I know that we've been talking about that a lot, but who maybe had dreams or thought their life was going to go a certain way when it comes to athletics, but it didn't go that way. Um, how, how would you encourage them or what kind of advice would you give to them? So my advice would be, I believe in God. And for me, Amen. <laughs> At the moment, you don't know it now. It sucks now. Mm -hmm. Just with life, like when stuff happens, you don't know why. But I know now, like everything truly happens for a reason. And just because, you know, maybe they stopped because of an injury. It was an injury ending thing or whatever the case, their health or their grades, they needed to stop. But just know it's all for a greater purpose. I think if I would have kept running, maybe I would have hurt myself or something else would have happened delaying me on whatever. So I really think it was God's plan for what I, where I am now. Cause I don't know if I would have been ended up in this position as I am now. Granted, I didn't even know I was even going to take a fifth year like that. Right. And mm -hmm. I'm so grateful I did. Cause I learned so much, you know, as far as my teammates being a leader and all, of, I mean, all the above and finding a career and stuff. So it's hard in the moment, but I promise you it will get better and you can reminisce on all the good memories and, you know, track to me, it's, it wasn't just a sport. It was a way to build a camaraderie between one another and, you know, skills that some people that were never athletes won't ever understand. Right. And it truly helps you out into the workforce now. I mean, being a team leader, um, you know, making exercises for some of my patients, I think about when I was an athlete and I can, you can mm -hmm. have empathy 
towards one another too, especially I still talk about my injuries to my patients that I see now and, you know, and COVID and all that. And I've been through it. Maybe on the outside, I don't look like it. Like I look like I'm <laughs> happy, you know, that's right. the thing about, yeah. like, kind and stuff to one another. Cause you generally don't know what people are going through that people never, I, I'm like, oh yeah, I had three hip surgeries. They're like, no way. I'm like, I've been through it. And that's a whole other mental situation. So everything will be okay <laughs> eventually, not now, but God's plan for your life. <laughs> so it's going to be good. <laughs> Amen to that. Well, thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate you right. making time. I know you're studying and busy, busy woman. <laughs> um, but before I let you go, one, I love music. So I got to ask, what is on your playlist or what's your top song right now? Oh, what is on my playlist? I've been listening to a lot of R&B, actually. And I love right now... Um, Coco Jones, I see you. Oh my goodness. Okay. So I haven't listened to it, but it's ironic that you, you say it. On. So okay. like I, I was watching her interview actually on so uh, Angela Yee's podcast. Mm -hmm. And I was like, when she was talking about it, I'm like, okay, I got to go listen to it. So I'm gonna, that's, that's my sign to go listen to it. <laughs> it's been trending on TikTok too. TikTok. that's what she was talking about it was trending on tiktok and i was like yeah the glow-ups of couples and i'm but i knew the song before it but okay. now I'm just, it hits even better now yeah. so that's been on for me but i need to up my music game so that's kind of embarrassing <laughs> no <laughs> you gave me something to listen to you put me on so thank yeah, you something about your hands. <laughs> yes yes you better sing it but let me uh let people know where they can find you on social media and follow you Yes, everyone. Um, I'm not a catfish, I promise. <laughs> she is gorgeous in person, guys. She looks just like her, her picture. So. My Instagram is Autumn, A-U-T-U-M-N as in Nancy, K and Kimberly Santos, S-A-N-T-O-S. That's where you can find Perfect. me on Instagram. <laughs> well, thank you so much, guys. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. No problem. You got to come back on. I got to get you. I back. will. I will. In a couple of years, you can interview me where I am now. <laughs> right. Right. Thank you.